Hi, I have Jason Urban on the show today. He's the president and CEO of Drawbridge Lending. Thanks for being on the show, Jason. Thanks for having me. This is great. I'm glad yeah. to be here today. And Jason, I've known you for a while. You've been doing some innovative things in the lending industry as it relates to Bitcoin and blockchain. Can Absolutely. you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So what we do is we are a lender against secure digital asset holdings. And what we are providing is the drawbridge or the bridge from these traditional lending sources or pools of liquidity into this new ecosystem where everybody is trying to figure out how that landscape works. So what type of people would have a need for your service? I think there are a wide variety of people, people who have these digital assets and because of the way they're categorized here in the States from the IRS perspective, when you spend them, when you use them, you encounter a taxable situation. But to the extent that you might need to pay your power bill or to go on a vacation or buy that boat you always wanted, you need fiat, you need US dollars. And what we provide is a mechanism or a platform for people to borrow against the digital asset holders. So if someone's sitting on, say, 100 Bitcoin, which is quite a bit of money, um, you'd allow them to take out a loan against that Bitcoin and use that for short-term cash expense or, or whatever? Right? Yes. What is the, the, the duration of your loans typically? We, we typically focus one to six months. It's a very volatile asset and our backgrounds are managing that volatility, but there's only so much you can do when something moves as rapidly as that does, which is an advantage to the asset, but it's also difficult from a lending capacity. So our loans are one to six months in duration, and we offer renewal options so you can re-up and renew. Just the strike price of that loan to value, think about your home moving 50% in a six-month period. You, know, you might want to refi or you might need to put more money up. We try to mitigate a lot of those risks by offering durations. To do. So your clients actually give you their cryptocurrency and you escrow it for them? Yes. So what we do is we don't like to take we don't like to take possession of their currency. What we like to do is use a qualified third party custodian so that their digital assets are resting there. So they know they're there and I can't take them unless they default on a loan or something unfortunate happens. We don't want, we, all we want to do is provide a mechanism or a platform for someone to monetize their holdings. We don't want to take possession of them. We don't want their private keys. We'll only take those in the event that they default or want us to, to satisfy their loan. And so in this business, what measures do you take to help ensure that these digital assets are safe from a cyber attack perspective? Well, part of it, the key for us is cold storage. Uh, and cold storage is basically storing these things on a server or computer where it's not connected to the internet. It can't be taken. So we, we require that all our custodians deploy a cold storage method as opposed to a warm storage or a hot storage. That way we know that the gold is in the vault, so to speak, but that it's not going to be readily accessible to anybody out there. Have you had um, a situation where a customer gets angry because the price fluctuates and they feel that they were... Uh, cheated out of their value. Interestingly, we don't have that problem because of the mechanisms that we deploy on the back end. So all our loans are no margin call and non-recourse, unlike a lot of people in the business that will have you re-top. You know, think about it this way. If I issue you a loan on an asset that's worth $10,000 and I give you 50% of that asset in cash, if the value of that asset goes from 10000 to 5000 I now have I need to create that cushion again. So you need to pay more money or re-up or figure out. What we've, what we've developed in our methodology is a way to never have to worry about that. And we use, we use the financial markets, we're markets experts and we're risk managers. And so we have mechanisms by which we can ensure that you don't have to worry about topping off your loan. Okay, so now, are there any restrictions on the type of customers you can have based on what the SEC imposes on you? We, we, we are very compliant. So we are, we, are, we are registered by the CFTC, and we follow all the rules and regs imposed on us by that. We have to do AML, KYC, anti-money laundering, know your customer. We're registered as a non-bank lender in, in all 50 states, or in 31 states. We operate in all 50 states. Um, so that we're following not only consumer lending laws, but also securities laws and commodities laws. Are there any requirements you have on customers before you can take them as a client? 
We, well, one, we have to do the AML KYC on them. Right now, our products are geared towards um, accredited investors because of the way we do the, the hedging on the back end. We need to make sure that those customers are sophisticated enough to understand what we're doing. Um, and so in order to do that, we need to put that accredited investor cap on things. It's a little different in the, under the CFTC umbrella. They call them uh, qualified exchange participants or ECPs. Uh, so there's a couple of different buckets you wear, but it's a little different than the SEC's accredited investor, but effectively it's the same thing. Is there a minimum net worth that your customers have? And, that, and that's part of it, a minimum net worth of a million dollars or an entity that's a million dollars that we require. What sectors do you see that this type of lending is getting the most interest in terms of where your clients are coming from? A wide variety. If you really think about it, bit Bitcoin or digital assets as a whole can be held by anyone. It isn't a single a single group that says, hey, I'm really into this. So we see funds, miners, people who are early adopters of the technology. They've all kind of stepped forward. Additionally, we've got a product that's geared towards people who would like to buy Bitcoin and want to want to employ some of the same methodologies that we're employing right now. Do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share? I think that people often confuse blockchain and decentralized ledgers with Bitcoin. I think the blockchain technology is, is interesting on so many levels. I think that as the world becomes more tokenized, and I think you're going to see, you're going to see more and more of that, uh, everything from the artwork that you see on the walls to buildings to physical assets like gold, silver, oil, the world is moving towards that technology and that methodology. And I think that being an early adopter and understanding it is so important. If you, can, if you want to make the same parallels, this is the internet in 1990 or 1995. The difference is the world moves much, much faster today than it, does, it did back then. So are you taking investors? We're always, we're always willing to have strategic investors come into the space, and we're not opposed to, to that. We're, we're very well capitalized, but we do recognize the value in, in being partners with people, and part of being partners is financial as well. well thanks again for being on the show. Thank you very much.